To acquire archaeological field experience, many students enroll in archaeological field schools in faraway exotic places. But even field schools that are not in such exotic places can be quite expensive, while some students have jobs or family responsibilities or other things that make it difficult for them to get away from their home city. The Field Methods course offered by University of Toronto's St. George campus provides students with an opportunity to gain field experience and to learn about field methods right on campus and within commuting distance of their own homes. The course aims to train students in multiple aspects of archaeological fieldwork, beginning with surveying and mapping the site. Although today there are lots of technologies to help us map sites, including total stations and differential GPS and even photogrammetry, Surveying and mapping the old-fashioned way with theodolite or dumpy level helps students understand the way these technologies work, since ultimately they all depend on trigonometry. It's also useful to know how to do these things manually in case your total station or GPS breaks down. Each student in the course completes a pencil and paper map of the site using light tables and rulers and compasses. And the more ambitious students may convert this into a pen and ink version. The course also devotes some time to field health and safety issues. Since many of the sites the students end up working on are technically construction sites, this includes wearing hard hats and steel-toed safety boots. But of course there are other issues that field archaeologists need to worry about, such as back strain, respiratory issues, and tripping hazards. Although the University of Toronto's St. George campus doesn't provide a lot of good spaces for field walking, it does provide appropriate venues for teaching students about a variety of survey methods, including coring and augering, ground penetrating radar, and shovel testing. Shovel testing is widely used in North American CRM archaeology, and students in the course learn how to carry it out in compliance with the standards and guidelines of the province of Ontario for consulting archaeologists. That includes a version of adaptive sampling the additional shovel tests or test excavations being made in the neighborhood of any positive shovel tests. The students also do some archival research to research the background of the site they're working on. Because the St. George campus is in downtown Toronto, with a history going back to the early 1800s, there is a large variety of archival sources available. The surveying and mapping skills that students have learned help them grid the site and select their excavation units, which they lay out with stakes or nails and string so that they can begin excavation. Each student conducts stratigraphic excavation of a one meter by one meter square, carefully screening the sediments that they excavate. Although the main point of the course is to learn archeological methods and not so much to make archeological finds, the campus has enough history that usually the students find quite a few things. But even in places that are not particularly rich in artifacts, they learn about stratigraphy and how to describe the sediments that they excavate. And while most of the stratification is relatively simple, some places on campus have more complex and quite interesting depositional histories, occasionally with remnants of stone walls and foundation trenches. The students describe and document all these deposits, and they also make section drawings and Harris matrices to demonstrate that they've grasped basic stratigraphic concepts. And although finding artifacts is not the main objective, students routinely find some quite interesting artifacts on campus, including jewelry, coins, military buttons, and fragments of bottles and smoking pipes. Whenever it's feasible, the archaeological excavations focus on places on campus that are about to be impacted by development, such as major landscaping or construction activities, and there have been several of these major construction projects on campus over the past decade, while a few more are planned. The course's first site was the front yard of the old meteorological observatory on Bloor Street, which was about to be renovated to become the headquarters of the Monk School of Global Affairs. Then, for three summers, the students did all their field work in the area surrounding the old Fenian Raid Monument on campus. 
This area turned out to be historically and archaeologically a lot more interesting than expected, and also has enough topographic relief to make it a really useful place to learn mapping. Among the pleasant surprises at this site were the foundations of a wrought iron fence that used to surround the monument. And students found quite a bit of evidence of ceremonial and leisure activities that probably took place around the monument over the years, including many fragments of smoking pipes, such as this pipe bowl with an image of an American eagle on one side and a Masonic image on the other. Twenty fourteen saw excavations in Sir Daniel Wilson Quad, immediately west of University College. And in twenty fifteen, excavations shifted to forty nine St. George Street, where the university had just finished demolishing a Victorian house to make way for construction of a new engineering building. In this case, it was necessary to remove a section of tarmac from a parking lot prior to laying out the grid and beginning excavation. Most of the excavation units were in what was once the backyard of this house, and they yielded a lot of evidence of gardening activities as well as the disposal of kitchen rubbish, which included not just things like animal bones, but also broken fine china. And one student found a Canadian large scent dated 1902. A few weeks after the excavation ended, construction began on the new engineering building. The yellow arrow marks the location of the excavations. In 2016 and 17, the excavations moved to King's College Circle at the center of campus, where there were plans to construct a huge underground parking lot. Some of the fine students made there relate to the military activities that took place in King's College Circle during both world wars. And one student found a gun flint. By 2021, the construction activity in King's College Circle was well underway, eradicating any further archaeological traces that might have been there. In 2018, the students' field activities shifted to a small parquet at the corner of Huron and Washington Streets in the northwestern part of the St. George campus. There had once been a row of four Victorian houses on this site, they had been demolished in the 1960s. The students' excavation units were placed away from the trees in what would have been the rear portion of these house lots. Some of them encountered architecture from the rear portions of the houses or from outbuildings that lined an alley at the rear of the properties. And some of them encountered refuse pits, including one that contained dozens of glass bottles. One student found a collar badge from the Canadian Officers' Training Corps In the summer of 2021, the field course took place in the backyards of some houses along Harvard Street that are slated for demolition. As usual, the students' one meter by one meter squares were distributed around the backyards of these houses. I visited the field site a couple of times to see how excavations were progressing and to interview this course instructor, Chris Ball. Um, so Chris, uh, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the purposes of this course, you know, what kind of objectives do you have for the students? Yeah, the, um, the archaeological field school is um, really just a great opportunity to give students the chance to uh, develop archaeological skills and get some experience working on an actual dig site, uh, you know, in urban archaeological context. Um, it's it's great because it gives students the opportunity to develop job skills they can take to uh, you know professional context, but also skills they can bring to um, you know academic digs, so they can really you know go anywhere with the skills that they learn here. And so our, our objectives are to teach them things like uh, how to map a site, um, how to excavate stratigraphically, how to uh, interpret material from a site, and uh, how to properly document and catalog the material that they dig up. And, uh, can you say a little bit about how this particular uh, site was chosen for the course? 
Yeah, so uh, this site was scouted because it's uh, slated for redevelopment by the University of Toronto. Um, and so they're going to be at some point putting up a new student residence here. Uh, and uh, because we know these houses were built sometime in, in around 17, 1879 to 1881, uh, it presented a great opportunity for us to get in and do some archaeology before the site was destroyed for good. That's great. So what have the uh, students been finding so far since they started excavating? So far we've got a lot of great stuff. Yeah, we've got a lot of the standard stuff, you know, uh, architectural material like nails and glass and brick, but uh, we're also starting to turn up a lot of really cool personal items. Um, you know, things like uh, old toys, uh, doll parts, marbles, uh, some some really pretty brooches and clothespins and decorative buttons, um, medicine bottles, you know, the stuff that people would have used in their day-to-day -day lives are starting to come out of our units now. So it's really fascinating. And I gather uh, you found quite a few to children's toys as well? Yeah, yeah, a significant number of children's toys actually. Uh, this site uh, for quite a while uh, has been used as University of Toronto family housing. So uh, we're getting remnants of the kids who lived here uh, uh, throughout the, the decades. Okay. Uh, what's, what's your favorite find that, that they've come up with so far? I'm, I'm torn. Uh, so far my favorite find are one of two things. Uh, we've got a, a matching set of ceramic dolls legs that have the stockings imprinted on them and everything. They're really gorgeous. Um, and we've also got a, a few pristine medicine bottles that have come out of, of uh, some of our units as well. Uh, do any of these medicine bottles have any uh, embossed lettering on them that says what their, what their contents were or what pharmacy they came from? No, the ones we got so far aren't embossed, so we don't know what they had in them, but they've got sort of the distinctive prescription lit finish on the, on the glass, so we have a fairly decent idea that they were medicine bottles at some point. Uh, and I noticed that you found a, what looks like a brick pavement uh, in the backyard as well. Do you have an interpretation for that? Yeah, in a few of our, our units, just sort of right in front of the house behind me, uh, we've come down onto uh, a series of bricks that are laid out in a flat, uh, flat line. And when we put a few more units in to try and trace them, what we've found is that we have a brick walkway extending from the uh, edge of the backyard all the way through to the back of the house. And uh, how, how deep are the deposits in the, in the backyards here? Yeah, uh, the, the depth of the deposits right now vary a fair amount. Uh, on the east side of the site, uh, we're looking at maybe 30, 40 centimeters. And uh, on the west side of the site, they're down in the 50 to 60 centimeter range right now. We still find cultural material all the way through that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, these, the sites or the houses here were occupied pretty much continuously from from 1880 all the way through to 2019, I think. And uh, so, yeah, we're getting solid cultural material out of every layer on the way down. Um, do you know when these uh, houses are slated for demolition? I don't, actually. I, I think it's sometime this fall. Yeah, I think it might even be as early as September. September, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so you got a very narrow window yeah. here. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much, Chris. Well, That's no, great. No problem, happy to. Yeah.